The definition for production possibility frontier or production possibility curve is the maximum amount that can be produced given fixed technology and fixed resource. It has everything to do with production and it has nothing to do with consumption, nothing to do with purchasing, nothing to do with buying. So what does that mean? It shows a simplified version of production decisions by a country or a company. It can only show two goods at a time. It takes into account the ideas of scarcity and opportunity cost, and it can help show economic growth or economic decline. When drawing a production possibility curve, you have to put labels on your axes. It does not matter which good goes where. I can put capital goods down here, or I can put consumer goods. I can put consumer goods here, or capital goods. But for the sake of now, I'm just going to put capital goods on the x-axis, consumer goods on the y-axis. The origin is labeled here as 0, 0, working increasing numbers up and to the right. So capital goods, I'm going to label 1, 2, 3. Consumer goods, I'm just going to go by 10s. 10s, 20, 30. It does not matter the numbering system you use. You can go by any numbering system you like. If you want to go by 1s, by 2s, by 12s, by 20s, that doesn't matter just as long as it looks correct and it's in number order. So now I'm going to label 0 capital goods and 25 consumer goods. So I put a dot at 1 capital and 20 consumer. Put a dot at 2 and 12 looks to be about 12, and then 3 and 0. And then I connect the dots, and there's my production possibility curve. It helps to show the maximum amount that I can produce given fixed technology and fixed resources. There are also three types of curves that you're going to need to know about. There's an increasing opportunity cost curve, which indicates that in order to get an additional good, you have to give up an increasing amount of the second good. There's the constant opportunity cost, which reveals that to gain an additional good A, let's say, you have to give up a constant amount of good B. So the slope there is going to be like a negative 1 or a negative 2 or a negative 10. There is a zero opportunity cost, which can look two ways. And that says that the two goods are completely unrelated, that you don't have to give up or zero is the opportunity cost. You don't have to give up production of one good to get additional products of a second good. And that just shows that the goods are completely unrelated. An example might be computer chips and walnuts. If you produce more computer chips, you don't have to give up the production of walnuts because they're so unrelated. There is a third, a fourth type of good that is considered decreasing. That doesn't exist because you're either going to have increasing constant or zero opportunity cost you can't have decreasing because what you're saying is given fixed resources and fixed technology you can get more of good A and more of good B at the same time so that does not exist there are also three zones in a production possibility curve zone one is an inefficient attainable it means unemployed resources and that refers to any dot anything that's below the line. So if I label that as point A, point A would be considered inefficient, attainable, and there are some un unemployed resources. We can produce more, we're able to, but we're just currently not. A good example of this would be the fact that we have unemployed resources in America. Currently in 2013, we have roughly an 8.5% unemployment rate. So we have unemployed resources, resources that we could use to be more productive, but we're being currently inefficient. Secondly, our second zone would be any dot on the line. I'll label these as B. That means we're working at 100% efficiency, we're fully efficient, or sometimes just left as efficient. And then two dots that would represent unattainable Given fixed technology and fixed resources, we currently cannot produce at either of point C. We call that, we consider that to be unattainable. There are really two ways we can shift the curve. If we shift the curve outward, 
showing an increase in technology or an increase of the number of available factors of production. For example, with the second one, if we have a large influx of immigrants coming in and our population grows, we become more able to produce, so we shift the curve outward. Or, if we have decreasing technology or government regulation increases, we ha we're going to have a decrease in the production possibility curve to shift it inwards. And if we have a decrease in the number of resources, let's say a lot of Americans decide to move to Canada or some other foreign country, we're going to be less able to produce, even at full efficiency. So the blue line indicates a decrease in production possibilities. We are now able to produce less total goods. Let's use this as our production possibility curve, explaining the difference between capital and consumer goods. If a country produces a lot of capital goods, so we can see there's a lot of capital goods, there's not a lot of consumer goods being produced, what we can assume then in the future is that this country is going to experience economic growth. Remember that a capital good might be something as a factory. So we produce a lot of factories today. We're going to be able to produce a lot in the future when the factories actually open. And if a country were to produce too many consumer goods, so a lot of consumer goods, and a lot of capital goods, what we can assume is the, the economy is not going to grow nearly as much as country A, we'll say, in red, because they're not producing a lot of factories. So in the future, there's not many new factories opening, so the production possibility curve is not going to move as fast outward because there's not going to be a lot of increased capital in the future, so they're going to be relatively stagnant.